Greetings and welcome back to The Home Slice. I'm coming to you live from the sharpening shack on a dreary late summer's day in New Zealand to bring you another installment of our survival sharpening series. Now to recap on our survival sharpening series, the basics of it is that I wanted to test the claim of whether 1095, as you find in many survival knives, is actually, as it is claimed, the best thing to have if you didn't have a sharpening stone and needed to sharpen on rocks only. The first episode, I went with some 1095 Crow Van, which was all I had that was close to 1095 at the time, as well as some S30V and Spider Co's H1 down to a river here in New Zealand, found some kind of sand stony rocks and tried sharpening on them. In that episode, the 1095 and the H1 basically tied, but it was at around 410 grams as measured on a Best machine. For those of you who are familiar with Best, that's not really sharp. That's actually in need of sharpening still according to the way the Best numbers work. So I tried a few more steels in a later episode. I tried D2 and 8CR13 MOV and again tested a 1095 variant in my opinel kitchen knife. And in that test, the steel that was purportedly D2 actually did the best. Now, the knife I used was a budget knife of that sketchy Amazon brand. It's like Ethan Grow or something like that. And I've since heard that often that brand uses mislabeled steel and it could likely have been like 3CR13 or 5CR15, which is a very ductile, malleable steel which would make sense that it sharpened sort of similarly to the H1, but a little bit better because I had some new stones. In that video, the best reading that I got was in like the mid 170s best, which is quite good. Um, I actually used my leather belt to strop in that video and that brought the numbers just a little bit lower and I also had some more effective stones. We're back today for installment number three to test the origin of all of the claims, the SE6. The SE6 is a pretty epic survival knife, been used and loved by many over the years. And since the last installment of survival sharpening, have been collecting rocks as I'm on hikes and things like that. I've got some from beaches, I've got some from mountains, I've got two from the USA, I've got some from waterfalls here in New Zealand, I've got some oyster shell and some various different seashells to try, and we're going to try them all and see which one performs best on the SE. I'm not going to strop today because I find that the strop just overall improves basically all the numbers, and so whatever's best off the stone is usually the best anyway. Each time I do it, I'm going to set the edge on, I'm going to apex the knife on a Falkneven ceramic on my Falkneven DC4 and then cut off the edge before sharpening it on these rocks. The reason for that is because some of these are quite rounded like this seashell and it's going to actually create a, either a concave or a convex edge, more likely convex edge. And if I convex the edge on one of the stones and then take it to another stone that's also rough textured, it's gonna continue widening and worsening the best readings. So in between each of the tests, I'm going to bring it back to a triangular point on the ceramic stone of this Falkneven. I think the best best score will win and I'll put labels of what the different rocks are on the screen and we'll see which stones that you might find in the field out in the bush or along the waterfront would perform the best sharpening SE1095. Let's do it. I should say the edge angle that's set on this after the batoning test that I just did is 18 degrees per set, so I'll be following that. So if you're comparing best readings, that's the edge angle that I'm shooting for with this wedge here. And I'm only going to sharpen the flat portion of the edge here, so. All right, guys, we'll switch to voiceover here, and I'll just use voiceover to keep you posted about some of the relevant details from this test, because these sharpening tests take quite a long time. And in this video, I've got 15 different types of stones and shells that I want to get through. I don't want the video to be like six hours long, but I left these first few tests a little bit slower so that you can see a little bit more 
of my methodology. This one is going to demonstrate how dull the SE is after just three perpendicular passes on the ceramic side of the Falkneven DC4. Keep in mind that this footage is sped up four times and so I'm actually going much slower than this but it's usually about a kilo. All right so <clears throat> after raising a burr on both sides and apexing the edge on the Falkneven ceramic we have a best reading of 999 grams. So after those three perpendicular strokes squaring off the edge, it takes almost a kilo of pressure to get through that best line. So anything that we get, you know, below that will be an improvement on these edges. So this is the speed at which we'll watch the rest of it. It's about 20 times faster than normal speed and I'll even go into a split screen variant so you guys aren't here forever. The chunk of white crystal is an okay kind of on par with what we've seen from 1095 so far in the 400s range but not what I would call a great result. I was really hoping that some of these pieces of crystal might exhibit some adhesive wearing or sharpen similarly to like an Arkansas stone just not flattened properly but as we can see that's not the case here either. I realized before I go on to apex the edge on the falcon even for the next stone, I should explain the rules which I operated on in getting these stones. None of these stones were quarried, they were all found out in nature, and I've not used anything to flatten them that is man-made. The only thing that I would have done to flatten any of these stones is to rub them against one another, rub them against another flat stone. So it can't have been a stone touched by another tool that was walked on and flattened or anything like that. We're only taking natural stones in their natural state given to us by nature for this survival sharpening test. Anyway, let's get on to the last rock from Long Beach. I'll supplement the testing that you can see with some commentary on things that you can't see. Most of the stones that you see that get under the 600 mark had something of a working edge, like the edge had a little bit of grab to it and it, it would have worked in a survival sharpening scenario. I think that what we're looking for in this test though is a mark under the 400 mark. So these two stones obviously fail to reach that. All right, we've got a river rock, a uh, red rock from Oregon, the Oregon coast in the USA, and some volcanic rocks from New Zealand. In this test, you can see the volcanic rocks are a bit too rough to refine the edge very well. And the river rock and the red rock do okay, but don't sharpen it to levels that are better than what we've seen in our testing thus far. And here, our next group of four different stones includes some oyster shell and different shells and a real flat piece of shale that I found on a hike. And while I had high hopes for the different kinds of shell, hoping that they might sharpen by some action that resembled adhesive wear, I did not find that they removed enough metal to really repair the edge effectively and all of those stones ended up not performing super well. These are a little bit out of order because I came back to the thin shale after that because I noticed that the lava rocks had left a bit of damage, which I'll explain later. But the results of these stones are on screen. They're all pretty high other than the second attempt on the shale. Well, after observing the edge and looking at the numbers, I noticed that the mark went up to 1200 once we hit the larger of the lava rocks and that did have some rough texture in it. And as I looked at the edge, it looked like there had been some damage that we hadn't been able to remove on the Falkneven CC4 and the shells didn't take off much metal. And so they didn't repair it effectively. So I felt like that second piece, the last piece of shale probably didn't get a super fair reading. So I took it to the diamond and reprofiled it and then finished it the same way on the CC4 and retried that one. And it scored sort of what the other shale pieces or flat pieces of rock did. Our best score was the little tiny piece of white crystal 
followed by the Little River Rock. So both of our rounded, harder, finer stones have finished the edge better. And this 1095 did not respond well to the rocks which have sharpened some of the stainless steels pretty well in the past, which is interesting. Overall, I would say that in this test, it wasn't easier to sharpen the SE6 with River Rocks than other knives that I've tried. And I guess the question remains like, is 1095 the absolute best thing you could do if you were gonna sharpen without a sharpening stone? I'm gonna tackle that question in my next survival sharpening episode where I'm gonna pit 1095 against some other common or high toughness steels that you might see in a fixed blade and sharpen them all with the best performing rocks for 1095 and see if they get sharper than 1095 did. So stay tuned for that. And here is a summary of the results for those who are interested. Nothing that I would call too impressive, but what will be interesting to see is whether the other steels respond similarly or differently to the way that 1095 sharpened on these stones. Okay, so I've had some time to reflect on and analyze the data from that test. I think that what comes into focus is that there were two kind of finer, smoother stones that got the best numbers. There's the river rock, which got a decent number, but also this little tiny piece of crystal from the beach actually seems like it did maybe some adhesive wear and brought it down to 484. None of the stones did stellar, but that said, in almost all of my past tests, I had stropped the blades after sharpening on the rocks, so these numbers are sort of at a disadvantage from that point of view. What I did notice is that all of the rocks that were relatively flat got somewhere in the 650s mark other than this uh, thin flat piece of shale which is like the closest thing I have to being not only flat, but level. This one was messed up by the lava rock destroying the edge and then the shells not being able to form an effective edge. And so when I retested it, it got 560, which is around 90 points under what the other flat rocks got. I also didn't load any of them with a slurry of any kind during this test, which I think is a bit of a disadvantage because I think slurry can help in deburring, especially if your stone is not made for sharpening. So going into the next test, I think I'm going to use this flat rock, which got the best score of all the sort of coarser flat rocks as my shaping stone and finish the edge really gently with this crystal. And I'll probably create a little bit of slurry on the rock with the crystal and then strop it. And that's how we'll run the next test and we'll see how those numbers go for the 1095 and for the other steels. If you wanna see my last survival sharpening episode, it's on screen now. For the rest of you, I'll say peace out from the home slice. Bye.